What would it mean for your business and your brand if you were fully connected and embodied in who you uniquely are? We explored this question and many others in today's conversation. Welcome to the Brand Gravity Show. I'm your host, Kay Putnam, psychology-driven brand strategist. And I have the distinct pleasure of talking with a previous client of mine, Alara Sage, about how to incorporate more play and to feel more connected so that you can tap into a sense of flow in your brand and your business. I invite you to jump into this conversation and to play with your curiosity as we explore some unique topics that I haven't covered yet here on the Brand Gravity Show. Let me quickly introduce you to the powerful Alara Sage. She says, hi, I'm Alara Sage, and I'm here to reignite the power of the woman. This isn't feminism. This is rethinking and reframing of what it means to be a woman. It is juicy, orgasmic, and absolutely powerful. You see, the true nature of a woman is something that we are not familiar with, and dare I say, fearful of. It has been labeled taboo, not appropriate, and even evil in some societies. The truth about the woman is that she is both powerful and tender, magical and influential. I'm here to help this profound transformation take place. I'm a woman's empowerment and sensuality coach for ambitious, career-driven professionals who are highly successful but feel unfulfilled and lonely in love, life, and relationships. I help these women shift from a performance mindset to a deep connection with themselves and their desires so they can reawaken their sexy AF self, reclaim their power, magnetize deep, intimate relationships and pleasure without sacrificing their independence or success. I'm an intuitively gifted mentor, teacher, and healer who coaches provocatively and soulfully. Alara has over 15 years of experience helping others reignite and transform their lives. And more importantly, she has walked her own talk. Let's get to the conversation. Thank you so much for making the time, Alara. Let's dive straight in. I cannot wait to geek out with you. Why is play important? Yeah, so obviously I have so much to say on this topic. You know, it it really starts with what really happens when we are in a playful mood. And from my understanding as an energy worker and as somebody who teaches people how to really create their reality, we have three primary chakras that are really like the primary chakras for creating our reality. And that is our sacral chakra, which is about two inches below our belly button, our heart, and the infamous pineal gland. So these three chakras are really the foundation for creating our reality. Now, when we are playful, what happens? Like the first thing, our sacral chakra is lit. Why? Because we are in the moment. And we are in that like childlike energy of innocence, curiosity, wonder. So that's all here in the, in the sacral chakra. It's also the seat of our power, which is really, really important to understand. So you're open, you're engaged very presently in your physical reality. You've kind of got this curiosity and innocence. And the next thing is, is that you are really in the heart space. Like there is joy when we are playful, right? Like we are laughing we are having fun, we are joyous. So we are opened and engaged here in our heart chakra, which is a connection to our soul and to infinite intelligence. And then we are here in our imagination. And you know, this is so important for business leaders, for visionaries, because this is where you create your visions for your business. This is where you can see where your business is going. This is where you can create those, those pathways and those programs is, is your visionary self that is up here. So all three of those chakras are lit, lit, lit. And I mean, and you're having fun, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is always a great time. I love, I'm, I love this conversation because I actually just had a, a conversation on our last episode with a neuroscientist, which said the exact same thing, mm. but just using, you know, different systems to talk about it. But 
for the uninitiated who are saying WTF is a chakra, can you Mm -hmm. zoom us out a little bit and explain what that system is? Yeah. So it's, you know, we have lots of different systems of chakra systems, depending on who you're listening to, but essentially they're, they're energy centers in our body and they're actually connected physiologically. Like there are a bunch of nerve endings and nerve, nerve structures that come into those particular chakras. So they're really starting to understand in the medical system that chakras do have actual physical relevance. But each chakra is really an energy center that's pertaining to a different body. So like the root chakra at the bottom of your body is pertaining to the physical body. The sacral is to your emotional body. And so those are like what you would call the auric field, the different stages of bodies of our entire being, of our physical and our energetic being. So there are different ways that we communicate with the different bodies of ourself and definitely how we communicate and create with our physical reality. Mm, Great, great synopsis. I love that so much. You were somebody that, because I had the pleasure and honor of working with you behind the scenes of your brand. And you were one of those people that I was just like, oh my gosh, this woman is a genius. I need to tell more people about you. So I'm so excited that you're sharing what you know. And I invite everybody that's listening or watching to set aside your logical brain perhaps, or if you're not as familiar with these energetic systems, just come with us on this ride and sit in this playfulness, sit in this state of curiosity, because there is so much wisdom to be had here. Now, you mentioned our seat of power being in our sacral chakra. What does it look like to be in a state of power? Hmm. I love that question. For me, it's really about connection Hmm. because we are all very powerful beings, but when we aren't vulnerable and I have a different definition of vulnerability than most people, to me, vulnerability isn't about other people. It's really about ourselves. It's really about the willingness to truly see all aspects of our own self. And so when we're vulnerable, when we're open to ourselves, we end up connecting deeper and deeper to who we truly are. And and really, to me, this is a conversation of intimacy. We become very, very intimate with who we really are. And therefore, we are just connected to and therefore allowed who we really are to come through into the physical reality. And to bring it into a little bit more, you know, concrete or logical context, we have, for instance, with women, there's the womb, but men have the same energetic um, signatures there. You know, the womb, which is in the sacral chakra and connected to the sacral chakra can literally, you know, bring energy, creative life force energy into human form. I mean, that is absolutely magical, right? Absolutely miraculous. And again, you know, even whether you're a male or a female, you have this energy capability and you are part of this structure of creation in the universe. Like we're actual physical creators. And so when we become aware of these structures in our bodies and become available to connecting to them, to opening ourselves to them, then we're able to really channel that same energy that takes just pure creative life force energy into human form and bring it much more into the physical reality. I know that I've heard so many times from my students and clients that they desire that authenticity, they desire that connection to self so that they can bring it out into the world in a meaningful and intentional way. So how do we become more aware and connected to those energies? Mm. It's about communication, right? Because it's a relationship. It's about intimacy and relationship with ourselves. So again, relationship consists of vulnerability, the willingness to be vulnerable, the willing to connect and the willingness to communicate. And this is one of the things that I teach very strongly because I teach sexual magic. I teach kind of a tantric energy, but I I teach it to the individual. And we can't even begin to have true intimacy with others. Even we can't have true intimacy with our reality if we don't first have it with ourselves. And that starts with these conversations of like, this is my physical body. How does my physical body feel right now? What does my physical body need right now? Most of the time, we're not even concerned. We're just like asking the physical body to do what we want it to do. And very 
very rarely are we tuning in and being, hey, yo, physical body, how you feeling? What do you need? And it'll surprise those people who maybe who have never done this kind of work. If you really take the moment to take a breath, tune into your body and ask, you will receive information. I guarantee it. Some people might dismiss it, but it's truth. It's really because we are ourselves. Those connections are always available, but we have to be willing to have that conversation. It needs to be a two-way conversation. Not only do I want of you body and not only do I want to create, but what do these other parts of me really need in order to thrive and prosper? Mm, I love how that you framed that as a relationship because every relationship requires that two-way communication. And if you just asked your partner to give, 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 give all of the time, what kind of relationship would that be? Beautiful perspective shift for that. Uh, what kinds of things could we expect that our body might tell us? Water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh stretching, <laughs> movement, you know, sometimes it wants touch, sometimes mm -hmm. it wants lotion, sometimes it wants sunshine. These are all really common things that I get from my body on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there with you. As an entrepreneur, whether we're new to this this way of thinking about our body and, and our creativity or not. When we start tuning in, we start having this relationship. How does that shift things in our reality? What does, what does that make possible? It creates flow because we have a natural inclination of creation, like I've, I've kind of mentioned, and we're all geniuses. We all have this absolutely magnificent fractal of consciousness with that we are that nobody else is it's unique to us it's like our fingerprint right yeah. and as we tune in we start to hear the different things that again benefit us uniquely and it can be very very interesting cuz you can also speak to your 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 womb for the women or to the sacral for the men about your create creativity or your creator you know if you're working with your business and you're like you know i need to create something and i have no inspiration i don't feel inspired you can say yo creator being like what do i need in this moment what do we need to do to play with to explore to light us up Sometimes it'll be totally random. Go ride a bicycle, go for a walk, go play with your dog, you know, but when you do it, when you listen, when you trust, because this is about trust and you listen and you trust and you take action, it's amazing the results. So what happens is, is you have that inspiration, you have those creative hits, you have that flow of next step next step. Now do this. And life becomes very fluid, easy, and graceful rather than this go against the grain and the grind. Mm. Speaking my language. Open up this window of possibility a little bit more. Let's keep cracking this open. <laughs> so if I'm not living in this like hustle, 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 just do, do, do. What does a day look like as an entrepreneur in flow? Mm, definitely, again, unique to each individual because yeah. just with the conversation of playfulness, that's unique to in each individual. But, you know, it usually has like a, a movement where you, you have something where you wake up in the morning and there's something that you like to do that inspires you in the morning and then you engage in your business because after you're lit after you're inspired, after, after you feel good, you're like, oh, bring it, right? And you pour that yes. beautiful vibration of joy, of lit up, of excitement into your business. And then there'll be this point where, you know, you'll hear this like, okay, now step back, right? Because you've kind of poured. And now it's time to engage in something else, right? That could be a nap. That could be food. That could be, again, going outside, sitting in the sun, whatever. And then again, you kind of fill that up and you get lit. Once again, I always use the word bliss lit because it truly feels that way. And now again, like there's this engagement and, you know, those lengths of time vary per you and kind of so many different things, the moon cycles, the planets, just where you are in your own creative cycle, whether you're in an ebb or a flow. 
but there are, there's this creation and then kind of a drawback and play and engage with life, have fun, and then creation again. Mm, like the tides is the exactly. visual that I'm getting. Yes. Exactly. I use that visual all the time. Oh, yes. Love it. Yeah. It, in my lived experience, this is all so true. My husband was just going through um, a bunch of stuff and he was trying to make it a, a really hard decision. He's like, man, you know, what should I do? I said, well, first you have to feel good <laughs> and then then create from that that state. I love the confirmation. How are you actually helping your clients with this? So this is clearly a very individual journey. It's you know tuning in, figuring this out. Where do people get stuck where they need help from somebody like you? Most of the time people are just directly in the head, right? And I have <laughs> definitely been there and just in the constant yeah. thinking, which I have nothing wrong. I, I think our minds are beautiful. I'm not like, you know, throw the mind out. They're, they're very important tools for us. And it's also about balance with and harmony with the other parts of your being. So most clients are up in their head. They're overthinking, overanalyzing, and I'm really bringing them down into their bodies. And like I said, connecting them down into their power seat and starting to have these communications with themselves so that they can hear when their intuition and when their guidance is saying, step back, breathe, relax, go have fun. And that starts to really just radically shift their environment. And then we'll have moments where we go back into being in our head and it takes kind of a couple of swings back and forth before you start to realize, oh, I'm in my head. You know, sometimes we just kind of get lost in that. We get, we end up being tense and anxious or kind of over, like not comfortably focused. It's kind of this incessantness mm. is a great word. So as we kind of swing back and forth into those spaces, we start to feel the difference between that embodiment and that connection and that fluidity and the times that we get over overthinking and over caught in the mind. Yes. I had goosebumps when you're talking. Mm. <laughs> I love, mm. I love when my goosebumps talk to me. Um, so you mentioned, you mentioned that we can just stop and we can listen to our body. What else is in our toolkit in terms of tuning into this energy? Absolutely. Like nature is one of the best mm. ways. And also movement is surprisingly wonderful. Like when people exercise, they oftentimes, especially like things like running and kind of just those repetitive motions that get you really into your body and into the moment. And, and they can be very, very inspiring. I, when I jog in the mornings, I sometimes, I'm always pulling out my phone and doing these voice memos while I'm like breathing hard because I'm getting so many downloads. And of course, nature is another one. And another great one, funny enough, is the shower. Mm. <laughs> Yep. This is very yes. beautiful cleansing and there's this repetition of the water falling. And so those are really great moments to just tune in and listen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my curiosity is going in, in many different directions, but you mentioned the pineal gland or chakra. What part does that control? It's very much about our vision, right? Ooh. So it's both a receiver. It, it's actually about light, which is information in the energetic world. All in light carries information and different levels of the spectrum have different types of information. And so the pineal gland and the chakra both receive light, receive information. And this is, you know, what we would call psychic, but it's not just psychic abilities. It's just the ability to sense and perceive information beyond just what our eyes are perceiving because your eyes are also receiving light and AKA information, right? So the third eye yeah. is just receiving information in the sub more subtler form. So things that your eyes can't necessarily see. So the third eye is receiving this information of light. And then it's also a projector, which this mm. is the really powerful part when we think of the three creator centers and using our imagination to create our reality. The imagination is like one of the best tools we have that when you're able to imagine your life, you are literally projecting information into your physical reality. And our entire reality is a holographic image. And so you can imagine how projecting those images into a holographic reality can therefore create, assist in creating that to happen in your physical reality. 
for those, including myself, who are saying, oh, I want more of that in my life. <laughs> how does how does one increase your perception and or like, is this happening without us knowing or is it something that we can improve? What does that mechanism look like or how can we tune more into it, I guess, for lack of a better yeah. way of saying that? It's definitely always happening, right? So all of our thought structures are constantly projecting. I mean, we are, If I learned this as I, when I used to be an animal communicator, we're constantly creating images in our head without even realizing it. And our animals pick up on that, but that's a whole nother discussion. So you're constantly, when you're thinking you're creating images in your head and you are projecting those into your reality, whether you're conscious of it or not. So it's definitely about becoming more aware of what you are thinking and what you are projecting into your physical reality. And this happens and you become better and better at this again, as you start to connect to yourself and have these communications and these experiences, this, this relationship with yourself, because you become more aware of what you are feeling and sensing and thinking and experiencing. And it becomes more and more subtle as you practice and expand on this. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a skill set. So anything that we practice at, we get better and better at. And so you start to become very, very minute visibility and understanding of what you are thinking, what you are experiencing, what you are sensing, what you are feeling. You know, I often make it very challenging for my partner because I can see and feel so much. Like there's nothing hiding. You can't hide anything from me. It's sometimes difficult for him. Yes. Yeah. I And I know that a lot of... If, people in my orbit, they identify as like a highly sensitive person or whatever label that you want to put on that. How do you mind your own energetic boundaries when you do feel so much? It's definitely about integrity on, on my end because I can, I can feel into all kinds of information about people, but I don't, I don't, right? Unless I have permission. And sometimes I will get spontaneous information. And if it's not asked for, I just dismiss it right? Because I don't mm -hmm. hold any judgment towards any of the information. So from my end, it's really about integrity of when to engage in the information and when to really open that availability to receive more. But, you know, we have this kind of, which I'm going to debunk right now, this understanding that we have to like protect ourselves from other energies. And, you know, that's still rooted in the belief of separation. And now mm -hmm. I will say, as we improve, as we go through this process in ourselves of owning our power and really deepening into connection with ourselves. Yes, we can do most definitely use tools and things that help create boundaries that help to make us feel safe. But the truth is, is a boundary is, is really self-integrity, which is self-love. And when you are choosing a life of integrity, you are emanating a very, very strong vibrational field. And there's really nothing that can quote unquote harm you in that way. And it becomes really about love and love of self and therefore love of all rather than the need to protect or defend from each other, which again, just feeds yeah. the belief that we are separate and therefore we, we're not safe. Mm -hmm. I love that you're continuing to remind us that it's about relationship to self on so many levels. It's about being vulnerable with self. It's about being aware of self. It's about just being in integrity with, with who you are and how you're operating in the world. It is such a great reminder to step outside of that, that like victim paradigm, or like you said, that separateness of us and, and everybody that we deal with. So thank you so much for, for reminding me of that truth. We're going to get right back to the interview for the next few seconds. I'm going to share with you my brand Clarity Collective and how it can help you grow your income and impact. If you're an entrepreneur who feels stuck or uncertain about what makes your brand stand out, then this is for you. The Brand Clarity Collective is a mastermind multiplied by mentorship. It's part online curriculum, part digital mastermind, and it's designed to help you get crystal clear brand clarity so you attract more perfect clients and grow your business. We have a thriving community of entrepreneurs who are all smart and driven 
as a member of the collective, you get an all access pass to all of my best branding courses, as well as access to our private community where you can connect with like-minded entrepreneurs and get feedback and support directly from me on our coaching calls. The Brand Clarity Collective is priced at just $2.97 per month, and after six months, you keep lifetime access to all of the courses. To learn more and to see if it's right for you, head over to my homepage at kputnam.com. There's a big section where you can click to learn more. I'll also include the link in the show notes wherever you are listening or watching. All right, let's get back. Talk to me about how specifically you're working with people. Like how, how can people engage with you right now? Yeah, definitely. So primarily my, my clients are women and I'm really connecting women into their bodies and creating this very deep intimacy with themselves. So again, having these conversations with the different aspects of themselves, their bodies, their emotion, their womb, their mind, and learning how to openly have those conversations. I'm all about empowering. So I'm all about teaching so that you have all the tools. So they're having these conversations with themselves and they're starting to really learn what their womb represents and what their womb symbolizes for them in this physical reality and connecting to their sexual power, which is creative life force energy. You know, I always say the universe is constantly having sex with itself because it is, it never stops. It's just having sex all the time. And so what I teach is very tantric in nature because this is about connecting to that creative life force that we have through our sexual energy. And when we do that with ourselves, again, we really own our own personal power and we're not, it, we're not putting it outside of us that, okay, you know, my partner is responsible for my pleasure and for my expansion within that space. My partner is responsible for, you know, creating my reality. Like it all really comes here first and we really, really deepen into like our body parts and our sensuality and most importantly, our permission for pleasure of life, not just sexual pleasure, like pleasure in every single moment. Then you have that established and now you can take that into your relationships, into your life, into your business, into your career, into collaboration with others, like wherever you want. But I really help these women really connect to themselves extremely intimately and connect to that personal power that they have within their sexual energy and their womb. Mm -hmm. Protecting anonymity, of course. Do you have a favorite transformation story? Maybe it's your own transformation or of a client. Yeah, you know, I've I have had several, even though this isn't necessarily one, but I've had several women write books that like they had they did not ever desire to write a book. It was kind of like something that they were like, oh my God, I have to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> this was after a lot of other change in their life, but it was such a beautiful expression of that wave of creative potentiality mm. that desires to come through us. And they had fun with it. And that's one of the things that I really like to see because they didn't even think of themselves as creative beings. They didn't think of themselves as artistic or as writers. And so that's where we're really diving deep down into who we really are instead of who we perceive ourselves to be. And I want to backtrack really quickly because you skimmed over it and I know that it's going to pique people's curiosity. What did being an animal communicator show you or how did it show you about you know the work that you're doing today? I know that you're not working with animals directly anymore, but I'd love to hear a little bit of that story. Yeah, it was such an incredible stepping stone. It was where I really increased my ability to tune in and receive information. And, you know, the animals are, are, are tremendous, right? One of the things that they taught me was that they're just not scared of death. They mm. used to, over and over again, I would hear quality over quantity. You know, they didn't want to go do all of these medical procedures. They just want to live their life and enjoyment and have as much joy as possible. And when they get to a point where that joy isn't happening anymore, let them go. They don't need to extend it and they don't need to do all this stuff that isn't joyous for them. So bringing yeah. it back to like playfulness and pleasure, they're some of our best teachers at being in the moment. And like life is about this. 
life is about joy and enjoying yourself, not about, you know, trying to extend your life. And not that that's wrong or anything, but this is just what right. they're teaching me. Or force ourselves into circumstances that are really draining us of that pleasure and joy. Ooh. I almost got teary there. That is really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Oh, it's amazing where we can learn lessons, which is going to be my next question. But before I ask that, I understand that you have an invitation for a connection call for people that are interested in or being called to, to learn more. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah. to connect okay. to people. I mean, obviously nice. that's one of my big things. So yep. yeah, I would love that. Yeah. Perfect. So I will put the link to that in the show notes and or below this video if you're watching on YouTube. And where else can people find more out about you? Definitely on my website, alarasage.com. And I'm also on YouTube, Facebook, all under Alara Sage. Beautiful. All right. So final two questions. First one, I have cultivated a community of learners, lifelong learners. When you are setting out to master something new. What is your strategy for learning? Mm, I always like dive in. <laughs> I have this like appetite and I just really, really dive in. And I think it's just one of those gifts I have. And, and I just yeah. crave to learn as much from as many different perspectives as I can. Mm not just from mm. one source or one individual. Yeah, I love that. And if you could give like a kernel of knowledge or a next step for everybody that is listening or watching, what would you want them either to know or to do with this information that you shared today? I invite people to really be curious about the game of playfulness and pleasure within their life. And I invite them to just start adding in a little bit more where they feel that they can, you know, little baby steps can be so important. And just when you have that time to be a little extra playful or pleasurable with yourself, just, just give it to yourself and see how your life begins to change. It's such a good reminder. It doesn't have to be a week long or month long retreat into the forest. It can be those little moments or those little pockets during the day. Beautiful, beautiful reminder. Alara, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your genius and for reminding us to play and to stay in our power and to stay connected to ourselves. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was a wonderful conversation and I adore you very much. You helped me so much with my <laughs> brand you. and my recognition of myself in that context. So thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Brand Gravity Show. I was delighted and had so much fun comparing and contrasting the conversation today with our previous episode with Dr. Moshe Barr because we covered a lot of the same topics and came to a lot of the same conclusions, but in two diff very different avenues and modes of thought or frameworks of thought. So... No matter which you resonate with more, I hope you are coming to the conclusion to bring in some more play or mind wandering into your business, into your life, so that you can be more connected to your creative force that drives your brand and your business. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you in the next episode.